This is Dan Zilnick, President of AFARA, coming to you from Northern Ontario. This week, Al Gore warned that we may see greenwashing stop the fight against climate change. And strangely, he really talked a lot about climate bonds and the risks of greenwashing through climate bonds. So this week, three-part question, what is a climate bond? Why are they a big deal now? And is Al Gore right to warn that these may be a vehicle for greenwashing? I'll try to do it in a minute. We'll see how it goes. 60 seconds on the clock starting now. Climate bonds are generally a form of financing. They're used to raise money to fight climate change or to invest in adaptation. So some uh, bonds have been issued to protect against the Nile Delta River flooding and uh, bonds have been issued to protect the Great Barrier Reef from warming waters. Why are they a big deal now? Well, there's a huge appetite for sustainable investing right now. And for the first time ever, bankers expect sustainable bonds to hit $1 trillion this year in 2021. It's seen explosive growth and it's now in the trillions of dollars. So the third question is, is Al Gore right to warn that these may be a vehicle for greenwashing? He, he notes that there remains a yawning gap between the long-term climate goals, so normally net neutral 2050, and near-term actions. And the bonds are often issued against these long-term things in the future, and the near-term actions are not as clear. But let's zoom in on the energy sector's first climate bond. Um, and I'll be clear that I'm not accusing anyone of greenwashing, but the numbers do not look good. The first green bond ever issued was issued for Repsol, and it was a carbon bond issued in May of 2027. 500 euros at a, for a five-year deal with a coupon set at half a percent. Now, Repsol has reported recently that they avoided 1.2 million tons of emissions using this $500 million financial vehicle. They use it on energy efficiency, so that's retrofits in their chemicals plants and their refining plants. That was two thirds of that 500 million. And the last third was spent on renewable hydropower. So what does the numbers actually tell us? Well, it means that every ton avoided, 1.2 million tons for 500 million tons, cost about 400 euros per ton avoided. That is a lot. We're seeing tons avoided for 50, 60 dollars. So 400 euros is a lot of money. Also, Repsol's emissions in 2017 when they issued the bond <coughs> were 23 million tons of emissions. Last year, there were 22. So it's fair to say that this bond was used as it was assigned, it was used correctly, and that perhaps it arrested the growth of emissions at Repsol, but it certainly wasn't $500 million put into reducing emissions immediately and lowering emissions because we haven't seen any significant reduction in emissions between 2017 and 2021 at Repsol. Again, I'm not accusing anyone of greenwashing, but I think Al Gore's point is right, that this could be a vehicle for greenwashing if we don't come up with better standards. So perhaps linking it to a cost of carbon abated, or a certain speed of carbon abated, or a certain depth of emission reduction would be a good practice to make these bonds more credible, because as they grow into multiple trillions of dollars of financing, we're going to want to see those impacts very clearly. See you next week, folks. Bye.